everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm really excited to show you this one. This is ISS Vanguard, Awaken Realms sent me a review copy of it. And I want to be very clear about what I'm about to show you for those who are spoiler averse. I'm going to play right after the tutorial of the game is finished. So I'm going to go through the ship management step and then uh, go to a planet and do an away mission, show you how all that works. And I haven't done this yet, so you'll be kind of experiencing it right along with me. And just to explain, the tutorial is very basic and leaves out a lot of uh, the more interesting kind of tension building elements of the game. At least that's what it feels like from looking at the rulebook. So I thought if I was going to do a quick playthrough to kind of show off the game, this would be the best way to do it. But again, if you want no spoilers at all, just come back and watch this later after you get your own copy. And I will be doing a review video in a week or two once I've played a whole bunch more. I don't want to review this one too quickly, so you can check that out when it's done. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month. You can't see anywhere else. We've got like more than 20 of them at this point. You can also check out our streaming channel for even more content. Listen to our podcast with one to two episodes a week or join the conversation on our Discord. So ISS Vanguard is divided into two phases. Now, the meat of the game is really the planetary exploration where you go down and try to find things, but you get some management of your ship handled by the ship book. It's got a bunch of pages, many of them being plastic sheet folders that hold specific cards. And the nice thing is it just kind of walks you through what you do in this entire phase. So first we have resuming a save game. We can skip that entirely. And then we have the bridge, and a lot of these steps we're going to skip, but first we would install any bridge cards that we got from our previous mission. So you have things from the previous mission and from the previous ship phase miss a waiting folder, and they hang out in here until you can use them. But then we generate command and energy pools. These are going to be our main resources for the rest of the ship phase. And I'll zoom in a bit on these. So our current objective is the next step. Explore the nearest world marked on the builder's map Pellucid in the TOI2 system. I guess that's where we'll be going. And basically the tutorial and the comic would have explained this, but in something that kind of pulls from things like Outer Wilds and Star Blazers and Battlestar Galactica and all that kind of stuff. We found an alien spaceship on Earth. We've been called to this like sort of heart of the universe place. And uh, in the tutorial, we gained access to it. So we have gone into like this new solar system we've never explored before. But getting back to the mechanics, our current objective gives us two command tokens. That's basically going to let us take like two actions or interact with two stations on the ship. And we get three energy to spend. And there we go. We have a nice little spot marked on where to hold them. Next, we draw a number of situation cards based on our current objective. Ours only says one. And this is like a negative thing we have to resolve. So we've got Vigilante Hackers. Vanguard systems have been breached, but instead of causing malfunctions, mysterious perpetrators and improve the efficiency of many systems. Still, people are afraid. So the effect is what's going to happen if I don't resolve this during the ship phase. And down here, we have information on how to solve it. That's going to be a one of the actions we can take with our command pool. And we can uh, use some of our crew members to gain other bonuses. That will make sense as we go through the rest of the stuff. But let's uh, keep going. But before we worry about any of that, we're going to prepare the planetary scanner. I've never done this before. And then go to the star map. Here we go. All right, so first we're going to open the system maps book. We have like a little bookmark that's saving what system we were in. So the Eye of the Void is where we ended up in the tutorial, and now we can go to different outbound systems. Our options are up here. It shows how much energy it costs to travel to them. That'll take us to a different page. We also might read some log entries. You'll see us going to the log a lot. There is an app you can listen to, but I'm not going to use it for this video. There are also sometimes things to explore within a system, but they're supposed to have energy costs. And this unidentified signal just has blah, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> so I'm guessing we can't look at that yet. Like looking at the system we're about to go to, they have clear costs here. So let's spend one of our three energy to travel to the TOI2 system. That's what our objective said we wanted to do anyway. As we speed toward the closest system marked on the Builder's star map, Vanguard launched an FTL probe back toward Earth to relay all the knowledge we gathered so far. However, it may take years before it reaches our homeworld, and the mission might be long concluded before we receive any answer. We're truly alone now, barreling into the unknown, the farthest human-made object in the galaxy. We only have ourselves to count on. I've ordered the section leaders to prepare their crews for anything. We nearly lost one full away team. I do not want to repeat the same mistakes. After all, who knows what awaits us at our new destination? Congratulations, you made your first space voyage! Okay, go to page 3 of the system map book, use the current system bookmark to mark that we're there, and go to log 300. The landing on the Eye of the Void laid bare two key facts. First, our landers will face unpredictable threats. Second, even a short scouting mission can leave the away team stranded for weeks. During our long flight to TOI-2C, we had plenty of time to put our leading researchers and engineers to work, addressing these weaknesses as section leaders prepare their crew for another ground mission. I hope things will go smoother this time. 
Unfortunately, the first long-range scans of planets in the system revealed something troubling. All right, I read the rest of the entry. It was still a bit tutorialish, but basically, they want us to land on Pellucid. Uh, it said this is going to be our first landing on a planet marked by the Builders. We need to gain insight into the origin effects of the calamity that destroyed this planet. It costs zero energy to land. We're going to use landing card L1. And we're going to slot it into this planetary scanner and we can pay more and more energy to reveal more of the card down here and like know more about the planet before we land on it. So here we go. First, it costs zero energy. So we can pay the cost and push the landing card up until we see another cost. We've got two energy left. So sure, they recommend we just do all of them. So yeah, what the heck? We'll just fully scan this planet. But basically, it tells us more the more we go. So we see for the landing, orbital debris is detected. So we want some armor on our lander, although we only have one, so we don't have much option right now. Frequent checks. This will help us know which away team members are going to be most useful. In solo, you bring uh, two out of your four section people to uh, each away mission. So we're going to want uh, some strength and some mining. And these are biomes. I don't know enough about the game yet to know what that means, but they're on event cards. And then finally, danger, solar flares. We'll want shields or uh, navigation icons, and we'll have a bunch of danger rolls to deal with. Okay, very cool. So good to know all of that. We can keep this for reference near as we're getting ready for the game. And that's it for the star map. Once you are landing on a planet, you are done for the round. Now, if you ever don't get to a planet, you go adrift, which is bad. You lose morale and bad things happen. So I'm just going to slot my little handy dandy bookmark here, and that'll remind me next time I play that I am here. <laughs> All right, so now my command tokens are going to come into play. I have two of them, and there are different locations I can go to. The barracks will let me get more crew members. So in the start of the campaign, you have uh, four crew members that are active. So uh, these are the different stations, like security and science and whatever these other two ones are. <laughs> And then I also have four crew members, one for each station, uh, resting, because they were the ones who were on the tutorial away mission. Now, it's not great to only have one person for each section of the ship available, because to gain bonuses from any of these uh, ship actions, I need to have extra people in a station, because you can't spend the last person for each of the four colored stations, uh, because you need them ready to go on the away mission. Even though I'm only going to bring two of them in a solo game, they still lock me out of using the last person for each station. So using one of my two command actions for the barracks would get me some more crew members that would free me up to use other abilities. Going to the situation room would let me resolve this vigilante hackers thing before the uh, morale effect hits. And looking at it, if I assign a crew member when I solve it, I can actually gain a replacement command pool token. So it's like I didn't spend anything, which makes me think if I go to barracks and then situation room and use one of the people I got from the barracks, I'll be able to get rid of this situation without actually using up any command pool tokens at all. I can do another action. Uh, Add-on facility I can't use yet. Research laboratory lets me research stuff. I've got some research uh, cards waiting from the mission I did. Production complex lets me produce things, including like equipment for my people to take. That's one they suggested. So yeah, I think I'm going to do barracks, uh, situation room, get the extra token from the ability on that card, and then production complex. At least that's my plan. So here we are in the barracks. That explains what each action does. This is using up one of my two command tokens. And I could transfer crew members to different uh, stations. I don't want to do that yet. If I had a rank two or three crew member, I could do the special training action. All these ones in red mean you have to send one of your crew to the resting area. But all of my crew are beginners here. This little single uh, chevron or whatever you want to call it icon here shows their rank one. I do have two people who ranked up from the previous mission, the tutorial, but they're now resting. So they're not able to do anything yet. But here's the main reason I'm here. I'm going to draft new crew members. I'm going to get five of them. And then I'm going to pick one for each station. Uh, if we had multiple players, like four players, they would each individually pick who they wanted for their stations. But uh, since I'm playing solo, I get to pick for all of them. And uh, they get slotted into... Uh, sleeves that have the information for their station and their rank right there. Now, before I make my choice for each station, let's explain what crew members bring to the fore. Uh, first of all, on the back, you've got like fun little uh, <laughs> bio details about them. And in one of the add-ons they sent me, they have like individual personnel files for each of these people and like a special mission they can complete to get a better veteran version of themselves. I'm not using that yet uh, for my first playthrough. But uh, big things, first of all, they've got an icon up here. This is a basic result. These like little arrows point pointing in. Usually those dice don't do very much, but uh, for each character, they can convert a specific colored basic result into a specific other uh, thing you might need. Wow, I got a lot of the same stuff here, didn't I? A whole bunch of these like DNA science research ones, one repair one and one navigation one. Now I do remember that uh, the planet card yeah, that's right. It said that danger uh, navigation would be useful. 
which makes me think already that Mark Polson might be one of the four I want to keep. And then additionally, each character has an ability at the bottom and a number here. So these are charges that they're going to get at the beginning of the mission. And then they have an ability that uses those charges. So for example, Reeve with his follower ability says, when another crew member travels from your sector, spend one charge to move with them. That's pretty awesome. Now, by the way, I probably should look at who I already have and what they bring to the fore. So I've got uh, two people who can consistently get me this like muscle up ability, uh, one for green, one for red. So yeah, I'm probably going to bring one of them for my two, and then I think Mark for my other one. So again, definitely getting Mark, and I want him to be in like maybe a different uh, station color than these people. But yeah, honestly, I don't really know much what I need yet, so I'm just going to pick some random people off screen. Uh, the one thing I will do is that uh, each of the stations has a different mix of dice. So for example, science has the fewest red dice. It wouldn't make sense to put uh, Reeve or Avery in a science station because then their ability would be pretty much wasted. And now I've got eight people, two per station, so I can actually afford to rest and use uh, four of them on actions uh, before I go into the next phase. Okay, next as planned, I'm going to go to the situation room, which lets me just solve one of my situations for free. And then if I wanted to, I could solve additional situations by spending crew members whose little conversion thing up here that I had mentioned matches the requirements here. I don't have anybody with computer or mining, I don't think at the moment, but either way, it doesn't matter because uh, I get to solve this first one for free. But it does say when solved, you may sign one crew member to gain one command token and remove this card from the game. So that means like it's totally out, it will not come back. And I'm going to do that. So let's see, I've got a ton, or not a ton, but I've got two of these like random little eyeball thingamajiggies. Uh, let's spend, oh well, yeah, I want to make sure, here, let me put these together by station. My plan is to bring Maxim and, where's the other one, uh, Mark on the away mission. So that means, um, I mean, I guess I'm free to spend any of these people, aren't I? <laughs> I just can't spend double. So yeah, whatever for now, I'll send Elizabeth Logue to get rid of this thing and get me back in command token. So she joins the rest of my resting crew. They have like little storage spaces for all the types of cards in here. And this card again is trash forever. And that gave me another command action. I'm going to go to the production complex as they suggested. So first if I had any production projects waiting in this awaiting area, I would get to uh, slot them in as options, but I don't. Uh, I just have research. Then I would get to progress any projects I already have. Each of them when I take this action will move one to the right but I don't have any yet, let's uh, fix that. So now I get to decide which production things I want to start. At the bottom, it says which stage they start on. Uh, lower is worse, it means it'll take longer for them to be completed. So the section tools will be completed almost immediately, or at least uh, next turn, unless I boost production. The improved Vanguard systems and the heavy mission equipment are both the stage two ones. And then a new landing craft that would give me better options for like different planets is a stage one. I can fit one of each number and I can push a number to the left. So like if I wanted to do both improved Vanguard and heavy mission equipment, normally they would both take the same stage two slot, but I can make one of them take longer and slot it to stage three if I want to. And in case you're wondering why I don't just produce everything, this production queue number two says it requires an upgrade. So this is actually not available to me yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do the three and the one, but which of these do I want? So improved Vanguard systems give me bridge upgrades, lander modifications, and facility upgrades. Heavy mission equipment gives me production projects and equipment. So this one's more focused on the planet. This one's more focused on the ship. This one's a bit of a mix. Um... Let's focus on equipment for the planet first. So I slot each of these into their starting spot, so it's going to take a while for them to complete. I'm not going to slot section tools in yet, though, because I can boost production by uh, resting or sending to the resting area crew members who have the indicated icon or icons here. Uh, here, it's anybody. But then for this one, I don't have any of those. And this one, I don't have any because I could continue boosting if I had the right people. So I'm just going to send somebody to boost this. And let's go and do my new security officer. She'll complete the section tools. So we're going to flip this over and resolve it immediately, but she goes to resting. These basic tools should help our away team deal with the unexpected. Hopefully, as our knowledge progresses, we'll be able to create more of them. All right, so we're going to get uh, lander mods to the awaiting envelope. Oh, awaiting, which means that until we uh, take this action again, we won't actually have them to use this turn. And then, ooh, but this is good. Move the following cards from unavailable equipment to armory. That means they'll be available immediately for the mission we're going to have. So we're going to get med kits, portable AI, a jetpack, construction arm, adrenaline shot. I'm pretty sure that each of these is keyed to a specific station. So we're only going to be able to use a specific ones that key to our character. Or we can bring the med kit. Ooh, and then we'll move some new uh, projects to awaiting, which means next time we take this action, they'll become new things we can build. So kind of like a tech tree, advanced section tools, and biome suits. I gotta admit, this is pretty cool. So when this card goes into the uh, trash, we never need it again. 
And with that, I'm out of command tokens, so we're going to go to getting ready to launch. All right, so now we get to choose our lander, although we only have one choice at this point until we finish that pelican construction. Ooh, I was wrong. Haha, -ha. install lander mods. Take all lander mods out of the awaiting envelope and insert them into empty slots on page 21. So we'll be able to use some of them for this mission. Although I'm not going to slot all of them because our space ranger, our starting lander, can only hold one structural mod. And heavy armor plating is plus two armor. Let's not forget, orbital debris detected in uh, landing on this planet, so armor advised. We're definitely going to be using that one, so I'll slot the other two. And by the way, just to show you, here's the only lander I have available right now. Um, I can bring four personal pieces of equipment, two bigger mission equipments. I don't have any of those yet. Six supplies is how much we'll start with. That's going to be very important for resting and getting our dice back, so the more the better. Uh, how many structural mods I can bring. We already talked about bringing the heavy armor plating. How many utility mods? I don't have any yet how long it takes it to land. The further left this is, the more rolls you have to do, which is not good. <laughs> and uh, I didn't say it's starting stats. The big one being uh, armor here. So we're going to have four armor total for this lander. But here's all the stuff that actually collects this in a more meaningful way. So all we got to do is slot in our heavy armor plating. And we have some markers to mark our starting supply and our landing progress. All right, so now we're going to our mission launch. Uh, I'm going to read through it all and then summarize. A uh, big thing is, I didn't realize this, all of our extra crew members go into resting automatically. So there was no reason not to spend them if I could have. But unfortunately, I do have, where is it, one person with a wrench. But uh, there was no slot to move that one uh, project into. So all of them were kind of useless otherwise. All right, so I was getting my crew members ready, but I do get to pick my armory. I'm bringing, I was right, uh, we have one piece of equipment for each of the uh, sections that I brought, and then some generic med kits that anybody can use. And this can hold up to four of those, so there we go. And to show you a crew setup, again, I have two of these. So first I slot them into the correct station. The purple color here matches science. Mark gets a number of charges equal to his alertness ability, so he can use this three times. And then the dice are keyed to the station. I just had to fix one of them. Uh, so we started out with five each that were like specific ones for each of the stations. But at the end of the tutorial, we got to level up into another one. Uh, now, you can only fit the dice uh, where your rank matches. So a rank one person could still have these, but you'd have to be rank two to put more dice here. And the face up face is the most common result. You'll see how all this works when we get to two tests later on. But uh, you basically both of them have three basic dice, two dice more specific to their job. And then this is a new like kind of wild risky die that they can use when they really want to pass something. They also each have a set of 10 cards. Now you get to build these decks out of a bunch of available cards, but they have some with like a little white uh, little <laughs> curve there that indicates like what the recommended basic ones are. You know, as you rank up, you can get better cards in there, but these are going to be like special actions we can perform in that kind of stuff from our hand. We can hold up to two cards at a time in our current rank. You'll see all that works when we get to the planet in a second. But first, it's time to strap in and land here. We're going to go to log 315. It'll tell us <laughs> what's going on. Vanguard, this is the away team. We are en route to the designated landing zone. All systems nominal. Uplink stable. We should be past the outer debris layer right about... Oh, wow. My god. You seeing this, Vanguard? Crystal clear, away team. It seems like the long-range scans were right. The planet is gone. If you see no clear approach vector, you have permission to abort. No, some pieces of the crust look large enough for a touchdown, and we detect anomalous structures among the debris. We could take a look. Anything you bring back will be invaluable, away team. Just don't bite off more than you can chew. There are plenty of other worlds on our list. Copy that, Vanguard. Plotting the landing path. All right, so we're going to roll what's called a danger die, looking at these different results, and it'll take us back to the log entry. And we have to do this uh, up to three times, then it moves to the right once each because of this little starting S spot. So our first one is... Uh, oh, I think it's bad. Uh, indeed it is. Debris impact. Choose one. Expose the cargo bay. Lose four supplies reduced by armor. Ha 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 ha. Or brace for impact. Each crew member gains a wounded injury. Injury cards are bad. You know what's not bad? Losing zero supplies. Because four supplies reduced by two, three, four from our heavy armor planing is zero. So, wow, yeah, I don't think this can even hurt us. Yay, thanks for scanning and developing. Oh, what's this one? Oh, clear landing path. Landing successful. So now we get to go straight away. We don't have to roll anymore to 317. So that log entry said we arrived safely and just kind of clued us into some rules that I've already read about. <laughs> so I'll explain them as we go. But we're going to uh, go to the Planetopedia and see our board. All right, so here we go. This is going to be like the main board for this scenario. Uh, give me a second to get things set up. All right, it took a bit. So we uh, have to land on this orbiting shard. That's the one with this little uh, icon for landing. We get to divide up the equipment. Each of us is going to get a med kit for one die. We can get rid of an injury die and then return this card to the armory so it's only single-use permission. 
And then Mark, the science guy, is going to have a portable AI when he's making dice checks in this little icon means like sectors that are fully explored. He basically gets a free die to an extent, so it's a little bit easier for him to explore in places we've already been to. And Mark, our engineer, uh, gets the ability to turn uh, blue dice with a basic effect into a wrench, uh, which I don't know if that'll be useful yet, but uh, that's cool at least. And we do get two random rank up cards. We pick which one we want to use. This is going to uh, tell us how to rank up our two characters into rank two. And neither of these are great. Uh, this one requires me to study volatile parts, but none of these biomes uh, show up on this planet. So we're just going to go with this one. We want to try to find three mineral discoveries. I don't know if that's even possible here, but that's what we're going to try for. And now with all that preamble out of the way, we go to the actual core of gameplay, planetary exploration. I'm going to choose Mark to be our first player. Uh, he'll have two actions, but uh, let me talk you through how all this works. So the players get to pick who the uh, start player is each round, and then play continues clockwise. And each character takes two actions before it moves on to the next character. The basic actions are to travel to another location. Now, currently, the orbiting shard has this little like red icon here, which means we can't leave here, even though there is a travel path both to the failed shelters and the crystalline filaments or crystalline. Uh, so we could travel once we like deal with this and get it to let us travel. Another action you can take is to rest. It'll get you some of your dice back and also let you draw more of these character cards. We each start with two, which is our max capacity at rank one. But resting spends one of our six supplies, so eventually it will not be an available option anymore. We can also take the prepare action, which lets us draw a card, and then we can roll some dice to try to resolve one of these uh, combo abilities, special actions at the bottom of one of our cards. We can lift off if we're with the lander. That seems like a uh, given up. And then one of the most important ones are special actions. They have like this little like sort of small arrow icon you see here. They're generally going to be on the points of interest, the locations we're at. Uh, in this case, that's going to help us uh, investigate this orbiting shard, which will, I assume, let us actually move to other places. And what's our mission here? Among the ashes, this broken world offers few surviving landmarks, but a large cluster of potentially interesting structures stands not far from the landing zone. We must comb this area inch by inch. So our objective is to fully explore the sector with that icon, which is over there. And then presumably we'll get a follow-up mission, usually like based on the tutorial, at least. <laughs> I'm saying usually, I've only played one mission. Uh, you'll have like multiple missions to finish. And we've also got this global situation card here. It has a little timer that's going to progress and then probably make something bad happen. We draw event cards at the end of each character's turn. And generally speaking, these will often have an option to progress time on all cards that have time. It also tells us how to travel, like what it's going to cost to do so. And we're not going to worry about that yet since we can't move. And this up here, this is nice uh, for our uh, rank up card. It says anytime we have during a skill test, one of these uh, little pickaxe icons, we can gain a mineral lead. Now, a lead by itself just means we draw from this bag, which contains tokens from zero to a two or three. I think two might be the highest. Uh, once we get three on a given deck, like the mineral deck, we get an actual discovery card there. So we need to... Uh, do a whole bunch of digging to potentially get uh, three mineral exploration or discovery cards. We'll see if that happens. And let's read a bit more flavor text. Uh, an Earth-sized planet on the border of the habitable zone with an elongated orbit. It gave life to an early space age civilization. Unfortunately, it was all but wiped away when a strange crystalline structure shattered the planet to pieces. And the place I'm at now says, though buried in dust and half melted, the artificial structures are clearly visible. Okay, so we're going to try to scout the site. Let's show you how a skill test works. And this is honestly the most complicated thing in the game, and it's really not that bad. So if you understand this, you understand mostly everything. All right, so it is Mark's first action. And you can only do one special action per turn. So even if he doesn't do as well as he would like, he can't do anything else. So Scout the Site says that for each muscle, each uh, digging, and each navigation icon, we'll progress this green track. Once we get all the way to the right, we'll read log 210, and I'm guessing replace this so we can actually move. But for each of these exclamation point icons that shows up on the dice, the uh, accident result, we need to progress the red until this icon means we have to exhaust two of our dice, which is not great. So looking at what Mark has available, he has a die that'll usually roll a pickaxe. That's what the like little uh, highlights in the corner mean. That's like the most common result for that die. He has the ability to turn any green basic result into a navigation which would be helpful here. And basically every die has one of these little Vanguard symbols. That's a wild. So like even rolling some random dice that don't apply to your current situation, you still have a decent chance. And now this die I mentioned is sort of like the wild push your luck die. It has a bunch of Vanguard symbols, including a double Vanguard symbol, but oof, three out of six faces show accidents. But hey, both the cards in my hand are dodge cards, which let me during a dice check, uh, spend them to reroll a green die. 
which uh, could be that one. So yeah, I think I'm going to choose to roll those three dice and not going to use the other ones because it's very unlikely it'll help me out at all. Now, additionally, other crew members in the same location as I am can give me one die. Uh, Maxim is going to give me this basic green. It's pretty much useless for him, but Mark can still use his uh, transformation ability to turn it into a navigation icon. And Maxim also has the uh, capability of playing one of his cards on my die check if he's in my location. Reroll a red could help or reroll any die. We'll see if we need those. Now, there are also injury and danger dice. Uh, danger dice are generally added by the check itself. Injury dice are added, as you can imagine, if you're injured. Luckily, we don't have to worry about any of those. So let's just see how we do. Oh, my God. That was a roll. That was a roll, baby. <laughs> so these are three wilds. I can count them as anything. And the uh, green basic can count as a navigation. I just kind of like when I spend it, say that's what I'm doing. So, oh, sorry. One of these was uh, Maxim's, wasn't it? Yeah, it was the uh, one of the basic greens. So we go put that in his spent <laughs> pool, not mine. These dice are now used until I generally take the rest action or something else brings them back. And now basically all tracks like this work in the game. So I got uh, four results because the Vanguard can count as any of these. The first success will place a thing on the track. And then each additional one we got four will move it. So we are one away from log 210. And we did not get a single danger result. So we're in a pretty safe spot right now. Now, by the way, the active player can also spend dice to activate combinations on the bottom of their cards, which also discards the card. So any basic result could be used to discard a danger die from my roll pool, which is kind of redundant because Mark has the ability to spend one charge to ignore a danger die up to three times permission. So wish I'd drawn other cards besides those. Remember, this one also counts as a combination. So actually, if I didn't want to progress this as much, I could uh, count one of these as a mining thing and say that I would gain a mineral lead for doing so. But now, for now, we'll just play it straight. And I do have three dice gone, even though it's going to use one of my six supplies. I'm going to use my second action to rest. So whenever you rest, you get up to half of your total dice. In this case, three is half of six uh, back. So everything I dispense will come back. And you also get to draw one section card, but your hand limit still applies. So uh, I'll have to take one of these three cards and get rid of it. So this one lets me like reroll any die during a skill test. Or, ooh, uh, I can spend any basic results to refresh a die back to my available dice. See, so yeah, I'll get rid of one of these uh, dodges because I think uh, it's a little bit too redundant to have so many of them. And with both his actions done, Mark turns his little turn available thing over. And, oh, it says draw an event card. So you do that at the end of each character's turn. And event cards have two possible things that can happen. You check the top icons here and see if at least one of them matches the biomes on your current location. If they do, then you resolve the main part of the card, in this case, Corrosive Rain. If not, you resolve this, which is usually just advancing time tracks by one. Seems unlikely we would have rain where we are, and indeed, none of those icons show up. So time advances one, and as I just mentioned, the first time it just goes here, it'll keep on moving until eventually it gets all the way there. And it says replace this with GO2. So the global environment will change when that happens. All right, so now we get to Maxim's turn. He can turn any red into a bicep. Unfortunately, he doesn't have very many red. This is not a great character for the station he's in. Now, we only need one success, and none of the other uh, icons we need are on his dice. And he's got Catch a Breath that lets him reroll a red. So I think he's not going to get help from anybody else, and he's just going to reroll his one red die and see what happens. So we just want a basic. There we go. Good enough. So it'll be spent. And since his conversion turns that into a bicep, we go to log 210. Vanguard, this is away team one. My sensors are picking up some electromagnetic activity among the rubble. I'll try to reach it. Be careful, away team. This planet looks too much like a battleground. You should expect danger and... Okay, got it. Just a small shard of some metallic magnetized casing. Nothing too exciting. We'll tune your sensors to the magnetic signature of this shard. This should help you find other similar parts. Roger that, Vanguard. All right, so it told me to gain one alien tech lead, so I draw a single token from the bag. Oh my god, that was lucky. <laughs> and it goes on the alien tech deck, and whenever there is a total of three points or more, then uh, all the tokens that are on it go to the side, so they won't go back in the bag. Eventually, the bag will run out, except there are some that have a little, like, kind of shuffle back in icon. They're usually zeros, though, I think, so it's not really useful. But that means we get an alien tech discovery. Rare alien tech, functional nano dust. Okay, so this is a planetary exploration uh, ability, which to my understanding means that I can use it while I'm on this planet. During dice checks, you may place this card in the roll pool of any crew member in your sector, including yourself. Uh, add a wrench or a red and blue to this roll pool. After the dice check, discard this card. Oh, 
So it goes away. Whereas if I uh, keep it, it can be one of the up to five discoveries I bring back with my ship at the end of the mission. But for now, I put it underneath my ship and it just kind of hangs out there until we want to use it. All right, and as expected, we are replacing this. So all tracks go away. And now we're at the Melted Cityscape. A civilization once bloomed here, but ended abruptly by a fiery inferno. Many of their remains are covered in thick layers of ash and volcanic rock. So the big thing is there's no more no movement uh, icons. So we can actually go to the other places, but we can also uh, take special action here to try to find artifacts. Oh, and we have some more log entry to read. Come in away, team. We have something you really should see. Yes, Vanguard, we read you. Our AI analyzed the data you gathered while scouting these ruins. It does seem there was an advanced civilization living on the planet. However, your current area was subject to extreme temperatures, irrevocably damaging most artifacts. <laughs> Tell us something we don't know, Vanguard. The rocks here melted like butter. The point is, not far from your position, there's a cluster of underground structures, maybe shelters of some kind. If you want to find anything more than charred pieces of tech, the AI suggests you go there, but... <sighs> there's always a but, isn't there? Well, our military advisors disagree with the AI. They warned us the crystal had something to do with the death of this planet, and they say we should investigate one of the crystalline arms before we attempt anything else. Understood. Leave it with us, Vanguard. Notice we got an extra optional mission. Vanguard's AI think the ruined shelters are our best chance of learning more about the denizens of this world. However, military advisors believe we must focus on the crystal instead. Okay, learn more about the crystal in Sector 2 and or learn more about the people of this world in Sector 3. So when you have Unique Discovery 2 and 3, those are uh, cards that are like on the board that are specific to this planet, discard this mission and gain one success token. Success tokens, uh, we spend them to upgrade our dice and we also need them to rank up our characters, assuming we even complete the rank up mission. So uh, yeah, cool. So yeah, looking at locations two and three, this one is failed shelters. This desperate attempt to survive the apocalypse was doomed from the start. No bunker or shelter could have survived this. Okay, so a danger action opened the shelters. Um, ooh, if we have somebody with a computer, neither of us really can do that. We can gain two alien tech leads. And if we just have a red and a blue, we gain a success token. Oh, we get unique discovery three and we replace this with a card. That's pretty easy. And then crystalline filaments, the arm of the crystal extending deep into space is difficult to traverse, but its samples might help us understand this phenomenon. Okay, geez, Louise. If we have a mining icon and a science icon and a computer all at once, we refresh all of the dice using this dice check. And then additionally, you'll see the arrow down. So these like uh, kind of gold ones tend to be like bonuses if you can really do something good. Additionally, we would resolve this. But if we can't do that, just a red and a green. We'll let us also gain a success token and get a unique discovery. Um, if we somehow fail, we would go to a log entry. I don't know why we would do that. So to travel here, somebody just needs to roll a danger die, checking danger A. And we can see what that looks like. Uh, there might be nothing. It might force us to exhaust a die. It might give us a wounded injury that we can use the uh, med pack to help out with. But to take a travel action to get the failed shelters, we have to resolve whatever the current global card says about travel. And what does this one say? We ignored it. It says uh, exhaust a die or roll the A danger die to move to a connected sector. Okay, so we can either uh, spend a die or potentially take some damage. Well, let's see, Maxim has one action left, and he can't do another special action. He's only used two dice, so I don't want him to rest yet. So I think I'm going to have him travel, and both locations need a red to be sure they succeed. He doesn't have a red yet. So I think I'm going to have him go up here and choose the exhaust one die option, because that will uh, get him back to having three dice exhausted, and if he takes a rest action next time, it'll make more sense. But his turn's done, so we're going to do an event, and then we start a new round, which basically just means uh, making each character available again and choosing who goes first. All right, so those are his biomes. Let's see. Ah, this time we definitely do have one. This third icon matches. An avalanche. Oh, my God. Lose a die, which means he takes one away completely, and it'll be down to five. Or each crew member in your sector, including you, rolls an A. Oh, but then gain one mineral lead. Okay, that's cool. Well, we'll roll the A die and take our chances. So this is show you there's only a single blank face and then um, the like number of like points get worse. So how many is this? It looks like there's one, two, three. Yeah, three basic, two medium, two bad. Come on, nothing. That'd be awesome. Ooh, <laughs> yay. So we dodge the avalanche completely and then our, uh... okay. So uh, this is one out of three. We need to actually get the mineral discovery. It's going to go on the deck over there. But this little uh, rotating icon here means that once we get the mineral discovery, this one will go back in the bag. So that's good. I thought it was mostly zeros, but apparently there are some ones as well. All right, so going into our round, I think I'm going to make uh, Maxim our start player this turn. And he'll go ahead and spend his first action to rest, because again, we really want that red die to ensure that our little exploration action succeeds. And he also draws a card. Oh, it's dodge. 
Um, what do we have right now? Reroll a red, reroll anything, reroll a green, draw two cards, refresh a die, discard a danger die from your roll pool. Um, that one's actually better for him since he doesn't have any other like uh, integrated way to do that. So I'm going to get rid of the one that lets me draw two cards. Now for his second action, he's going to explore the failed shelters and he needs at least a red or a blue in the test, but it also has a danger eyed die here. So he's going to have to roll the A danger die. So I'm just going to do the basics here. Um, if either of these rolls a Vanguard symbol, then I can activate this computer. The rest won't matter. I'll get two alien tech leads and then still do this. But that's a pretty low chance, so let's just go for it. All right, so we did get a danger result. What is that for A? Uh, so it's a wounded injury. So this goes underneath the character, and you'll see it has this little icon. So from now on, he has to roll a yellow injury die with each of his uh, dice rolls. And if he rolls the indicated uh, icon, he puts it on the card and he can only get activated if he gets more injury dice once per roll. And then he has to resolve the action, which is to exhaust one of his dice or spend one of his dice. Now, here we have an interesting choice, though. If we don't want him to be wounded, I could use my dodge spending the blue die to discard one danger die from my roll pool. I like that. Now, you might say, oh, Mike, what the heck are you doing? You need this die, but hold on. So, yes, yeah, so that danger die went away and I never became wounded. Now, here's why just this red showing an accident is going to be okay for me. Look at Maxim's discipline ability that he has two charges for. Spend one charge to turn an accident into a vanguard. So my nothing becomes a wild, which means now I'm going to gain two alien techs, and then I'll get a success token, unique discovery three, and I'll replace this card. So my first alien tech is... Oh, this is cool. <laughs> it's a zero, but it says plus one charge. So we get to pick one character to gain a charge back. I guess we'll do Maxim since uh, he just used his. Of course, it didn't actually help us get any alien tech. And there's a zero that cycles. Great. Uh, that was just a waste. <laughs> then we also get one of these success tokens, which just kind of hangs out near the board. And we get unique discovery three, which is scorched records. Okay, so during planetary exploration, when you gain this card, oh, each group member draws a card. That's cool. Now, it does force Mark to maybe get rid of something. Uh, okay, we roll a blue. Uh, with an A means uh, any die that's not an accident die. Roll one from your spend pool and add it to your roll pool. Oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going to get rid of the dodge because, again, his uh, inherent ability lets him do that anyway. And this place gets replaced. Uh, the crystalline arm extending far into space can be supplied directly from Vanguard if we're desperate enough to order an emergency drop. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so emergency supply drop. You must discard a success token and perform this action. Um, if we get any accidents, we automatically do the red instead of the green. But otherwise, if we just have two dice that didn't roll accidents, we gain three supplies and then replace this card with P00. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I guess we aren't necessarily limited to just the five supplies we have left. Oh, no, uh, four. That's right, because I rested again. And now Maximum's got one action left. I kind of feel like he should move to the mission objective and uh, Mark can go down to the other place. So it's the same icon as before. He'll have to roll the danger die or just uh spend one die i think spending is fine i really haven't noticed any checks yet that use that uh, science icon so i think we don't need it all right so when we get here we go to log 15 i'm guessing it'll tell us what to put there the scans were correct there are several interesting sites in the sector so we're going to find uh there are often multiple copies of cards we're going to get the three p113 cards a random one's going to go in the sector and the rest are going to go back so we got a medical wing. The ruined facility contains a bewildering plethora of organic remains and biological hazards. Adequate protection is advised. Okay, so inspect the remains. Ooh, if you have no shields in your roll pool, you fail automatically and gain an exhausted injury. We don't have any good way to get shields, and we don't have any good way to get any of those icons either. So we really seem to find a way to get a shield, and then the green and any other color is pretty easy to do. Now, notice there is no white flag here. So even though we are in the location, we have not fully explored this sector yet. So we'll need to do more there. That was the end of Maxim's turn. He's drawing an event. And no, neither of those match. So we're just going to discard this and advance time by one. And right, now we get to Mark, uh, his first action. Yeah, I don't really care as much about alien tech leads. Let's head down to the crystalline filaments. He's rolling one danger die, but he can use one of his charges to ignore it if it's really bad anyway. Is that really bad? Yeah, that's definitely the wounded injury. <laughs> so Mark's going to spend one of his charges from his alertness ability to take no effect from that. And now he's going to study the crystal. Uh, there's basically no way <laughs> that he's going to achieve this top result. So we'll just take a basic red and green. Oops, and he needs a danger die as well. All the danger. All the danger. That is the basic result. It exhausts another die. Uh, do I care about that? I guess not. Uh, we haven't really needed any repair yet, have we? 
So he didn't get the top result, but he does uh, gain one success token, and we get Unique Discovery 2 and replace this. Unique Discovery 2, Crystalline Shard, Ship Management. When unloaded, we get a new research project. Okay, cool. So if we just bring this back, it's not going to do anything on the planet right now, unlike the Scorch Records, which gave us a free card draw, but it'll be useful later. This becomes Point of Interest, P11. Oh, it's the exact same as the other one, so just another emergency supply drop option. And actually, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do the emergency supply drop here in a second. And with that in mind, for Mark's second action, I think he's going to rest. So that brings us down to three supplies currently, but he gets all his dice back and a card. Ooh, move one lead token from any discovery deck to any other discovery deck. That's cool uh, in theory, <laughs> but uh, the only thing I want to get right now is mineral discoveries, and that's the only one with an actual thing on it. Although it does mean that like some of the actions to get me alien leads could be more useful. Ooh, and then if I get a science icon, I can refresh too. Yeah, see, this is why you might want to build a deck that actually works with your characters. Mark doesn't really have any good way to get science. So, yeah, even though that's kind of okay, I think I'm going to keep Respite and Stroke of Inspiration instead. All right, we're going to an event. And no matches, which just means another time track advancement. And we'll have Mark go first. For his first action, he's going to try to do the emergency supply drop. Oh, that's right. We have to discard a success token. Oh, and I almost forgot, um, when you have Unique Discovery card 2 and 3, discard this and gain another success tokens. We've got 3. Maybe we don't need the Emergency Supply drop. We've still got 3 rests left. And, I mean, there are a lot of locations left to explore over here, and it's going to cost a lot just to move. But, you know, I, I bet we can make it. I bet we can make it. Let's try not to waste our supply tokens. So for Mark's second action, he'll... Uh, oh, no, I guess this is his first action because I decided not to do the supply drop. He'll spend two dice to move. Um, Let's see. I don't want to use the green because that could become a useful thing. So I guess... Oh, and the red is good. So I don't know. Let's do like that and that to have all my colors open. And we're going to log 16. We're passing the ridge of solidified lava. Don't forget to gather samples. They may tell us something about the composition of the planet's core. It might be somehow related to this crystal. Wait, there's a whole field of antenna up ahead. They are humongous. Perfect place to scavenge some alien tech. Define humongous away team. Uh, at least several times larger than our Earth's fast telescope. Diameter is measured in kilometers. Okay, so place card 114 in the sector. This sounds a little freaky. Ultra large array. The forest of enormous antenna indicates the civilization tried to commute with someone or something. All right, so we can study the array. Oof, it's a lot of dice and I didn't get extra supplies. Well, we can always theoretically go back and try again. So I guess for Mark's second action, he'll go ahead and study it. All right, so we need a blue and two other colors. I think I'm going to use my potentially double one because the uh, the accidents won't actually hurt us here, but the double would mean that I could doubly fulfill this. Or actually, yeah, well, I guess we could do the thing above if I get the double, so that'd be pretty cool. And then, do I add in my... If I get lucky with the double, then I can still, like, mine a mineral thing. So, sure, let's uh, shoot for the stars here. All right. Um, okay. So we got a wild, which could be either the computer or the... Okay, we don't have any, like, consistent way to get that, do we? All right, so I guess, you know, it's fine. <laughs> we can just do the basic thing. So we'll get a success and replace this with 115. Ooh, array control room. The main thing controlling the array is too large to move and extremely complex. Decipher alien systems. If you have Unique Discovery 3, you may treat any uh, basic results as eyeball results, which are what we need. Oh, but then any leftover die that's not an eyeball will advance red. God, that seems that seems tough. Now, I believe by the way that you can like partially explore a planet and then leave and come back. Or we can do the resupply because we actually have more success tokens than we need now. But in any case, let's do the event for our guy here. It's a lot of icons. And nope, none of them. So we're just advancing time. I don't know how terrible this is going to be when it goes all the way. I go to Maxim. So... He needs to have a shield, and besides that, just a green in any other color. What I think I want to do is use this, uh, like, DNA die, because I don't think it really matters, and his, like, risk-reward die. So he has a 50% uh, chance of getting a Vanguard. Um, <laughs> and he's got two respites to reroll, but even more importantly, he's got his uh, skill that lets him turn an accident into a Vanguard. So basically, I think we're going to succeed automatically at this, which is nice. Um, okay. Yeah, so let's just keep it simple and use one of his uh, two remaining charges to change that into a single Vanguard. So um, it's not going to be this bonus one up here. She really should have brought somebody with this alien icon. The, <laughs> the card didn't tell us we needed it. Um, so we'll just go to log 32. I'm entering the underground. The charred walls seem to absorb the light. Starting to regret that I went in alone. 
There are remains here, dozens of bodies in many strange shapes and sizes. It's bewildering and unsettling. I look over my shoulder and half expect one of them to move. Some cadavers show signs of major bionic and cybernetic modifications. They must all belong to different species. All surviving equipment seems adapted to various operators of different body shapes. How did so many intelligent species end up on one planet? We haven't found any proof that this was a spacefaring civilization. I'm leaving this place. There's nothing more for me to see. But I have several questions for later. Did all these species evolve on this planet simultaneously? Or were they brought here somehow? How do they manage to live together peacefully? We should be on the lookout for more clues, especially something that could hold any pieces of their communication. Oh, crud. All right, so this mission is a lot tougher than I thought. We're going to have to keep on going through the 113s until we've seen all three of them, and only then, I think, will it be fully explored. All right, so this one, ooh, strip mines, and look, three mineral leads. Hmm, okay. Oh, and his red die could automatically become the, uh, the bicep. Wide swaths of the planet's surface are covered with strip mines overshadowed by the hulking, enormous machines. Now, I should note, by the way, because this is pretty important, uh, you can exert yourself to sacrifice a die, so it goes back to, like, your section. It's not gone forever. You'll get it back on your next mission. Uh, but you lose one die from your board for this entire mission to refresh five dice. So we actually have several opportunities, even when our supplies run out, to uh, <laughs> get things back in a way. But I guess we don't need to do that yet. Uh, let's see. So he wants his red back, and he wants his, like, wild everything die back. Because, again, with his last uh, charge, that's a guaranteed wild. And what's the third die he wants? I guess. Oh, wait, these are in the wrong. <laughs> uh, let's get another blue, I guess. And he gets a card. You have the convert ability. Oh, this is nice. So during a dice check, you can change any basic one into a pickaxe, which is actually what we need to go with our uh, bicep. So, cool. We're definitely going to keep that. Um, so I guess we'll get rid of one of our respite cards. All right, he's going to do an event. Um, no. So just uh, another time track. Two more of those, and I'm guessing badness will happen. And I'm curious about the control room. So even though uh, <laughs> the other guy's kind of doing the main stuff, I'm going to have Mark go first and take an action to rest, and then he'll do this, I think. So I really want basic icons, because basic ones are what I can use with the Unique Discovery 3 to um, find that thing. Well, I guess it doesn't hurt to have that, right? And maybe harvest some minerals. All right, he gets a card. Another stroke of inspiration. So you can use any die to take another die from his spent pool and add it to the roll pool. Nah, I guess we don't need two of those. And then for the second action, he's going to try to activate the control room, and he's just going to do everything. He's just going to do everything and see what happens. He's got some rerolls and stuff. So we'd love four basic results or vanguard results. Uh, seems unlikely. Oh, maybe not. Oh, gosh, yeah, this is not great. Uh, so that's two out of the four but that's gonna go down and i'll just reset the green track now this i can use to get a mineral lead so that's not gonna hurt me because it'll be gone but what the hey let's use a stroke of inspiration to re-roll that i think okay and what we use respite to do it again <laughs> maybe uh sure okay there we go <laughs> so now we have three successes and we get a mineral lead do i kind of wish that that was not a mineral lead yes i kind of do all right and we get a two plus a charge. Okay, so I guess I'll give Maxim back another one of his charges. Well, that's definitely not getting us any closer to getting those minerals, boys. That was both a Mark's action, so... Oh, that one does apply. Stuck. He has to trash a die or progress time tracks by one. Um, I'm just about to trash a die to get dice back, so I don't want to do that. So I guess we'll just we'll see what happens. Maybe we won't have to move much anymore, and then it wouldn't hurt us. All right, now Maxim. Scouting the mines should be pretty easy. He'll go ahead and do that first. He can turn any basic into a pickaxe, and he can turn any basic red into a bicep. So the question is, do I roll this to, like, make sure things are okay? I don't think I'll need to. I'll just roll a basic red and a basic blue, and let's hope that nothing goes uh, wonky. There we go. So uh, he can turn the red into a bicep with his character ability, and he can turn the blue into a pickaxe by discarding his specialized tools. He's going to get us three mineral leads. Woohoo! And uh, then we'll go to log nine as well, even though we don't. Oh, I guess we do have those dice, but it didn't matter because once you get to the gold, you just get the next one for free. All right, come on. I still need all three mineral leads to actually uh, rank up. Okay, that's the first draw, a one. We're definitely going to waste something here. Are you serious? <laughs> a second draw, and what? <sighs> All right, well, at least we can give one of them a free card. I think I'll give it to Mark, because he has zero cards right now. But yeah, that was a mess, boys. Then we're going to do log nine, which I assume will get the last card here. 
Look at this. What were they digging for? Lime. The walls and piles contain mostly calcium oxide and calcium hydroxide. I guess they were making concrete. Enough concrete to fill a small sea. Okay, a new objective. Find out what the concrete was used for. What? Oh, this is different. All right, so a bunch of stuff happened here. We got a new thing down here that they want us to invest in, the Doomsday Sphere. We got the final 113 card here, and our mission got replaced. What the heck? So now it says, wherever we go, we find signs of the massive construction effort the civilization undertook in its final weeks. But what were they building and where? The roads and transport systems point to an area not far from here. Okay, we need to find and unlock the Doomsday Sphere. All right, so up here is a buried signal to get us alien tech leads. I don't care too much about that now. Uh, but this one, ooh, this has the flag, which means if Mark goes there, his portable AI will help him be a lot more efficient with his dice usage. Protected from seismic movements by an intricate system of giant springs and pistons, shielded with a thick shell of super hard alloy, the sphere must house something important. Okay. Um, hmm. So we just basically want to get a, oh, this uses a, uh, repair icons, which Mark or Maxim can do pretty well. So we should have a pretty decent uh, shot at getting this one. So yeah, I think I might just abandon the buried signal, move down here, probably need to exert myself to make that happen. And Mark next turn will finish up with the control room and then come up here to help. And Maxim does have one action left, so he'll just go ahead and move down here now. That uses up all his dice, so he's uh, at fully exhausted. Yeah, and Mark is as well, but uh, that's fine because they're both going to use uh, exertion to trash a die and get all five back and hopefully be ready to win this thing. But first, an event in my new fun location. Nope. Uh oh, so time track is happening. All right, so we're getting a new global condition card. Let's see what it says. This doesn't look good. Uh, gamma flashes. The crystalline structure begins to emit sudden gamma flashes. <laughs> Should we take shelter? Oh, gosh. All dice checks gain the following special effect. If you roll two accidents, you have to roll a danger. Okay. Um, if I remember correctly, I think that uh, special effects like that take the card out. Yeah, and you have to resolve this first. So, like, that would also mean those dice wouldn't apply to whatever test I'm doing. Okay, now travel, you need to spend a red or a blue to move to a connected sector, or exhaust two dice. Oh, and gosh, uh, if time runs out again, I feel like bad things are going to happen. <laughs> right, but it's fine, it's fine. Let's have uh, Mark go first and finish this thing up and then come help. All right, so he's going to exert. I'm just looking at what the thing needs. So that'll actually be helpful. That'll actually be helpful on that final card. And that appears to be it. But basics are also kind of helpful. Well, either way, I think he'll uh, get rid of his basic green back into his station to get all the rest of his stuff back. And that's not an action. So now he'll actually try to finish up his location for one action. And all I need is a single basic result. All right, so he's got this. I mean, it's only a one six chance that it doesn't succeed. I'm not going to spend anything else. We're just going to go for it. Yes. Okay, so we are good. We go to log 250. Hopefully this matters <laughs> for anything. The study of the array revealed the creatures of this planet made a significant effort to contact other civilizations. However, once they realized they were doomed, they tried to rewire this massive complex from a giant receiver into a giant transmitter. The message they tried to send is unfortunately impossible to recover. We can only wonder whether it was some sort of final testament, an admission of a great mistake, or a warning they hoped to deliver to other civilizations. Another disconcerting find is that many terminals and devices here are designed to accommodate users of different shapes, sizes, numbers of limbs, even though this wasn't a spacefaring civilization, and even though it uses a single language. We must learn more about this place to form an opinion. Okay, so we get a success token. Ooh, two alien tech leads, not really what I want. And we can replace the POI in the sector with a zero, which means it's just fully explored. Now, come on, I've drawn basically every tra- <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, there are numbers in here, right? How bad is my luck? I just want to look real quick. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of zeros, but there's also a lot of ones and twos. Oh man, he uh, gave up his little recompiling work uh, card that would have let him- Move that to the mineral one. I mean, we're not going to get <laughs> three mineral cards. We don't have any yet, so I don't think I have to worry about that. All right, and for Mark's second action, he's going to go help out Maxim. So with the new global card, he needs to spend a red or blue to travel safely. We'll go with the red, I guess. Yeah, because both these other ones uh, match the stuff we're trying to do. All right, I think we're getting near the end. Uh, ooh, enticing vista. That's a lot of icons, and none of them apply <laughs> So we're actually just uh, advancing time, which I think is probably preferable, because it seems unlikely to me that it'll go all the way to the end. All right, now it's Maxim's turn. He's going to get uh, all his stuff back. So any blue basic with his construction arm can be a repair, which will work here. Any red basic can be a muscle, which will work here. I'm just trying to figure out what I don't need. This one. This one seems to do nothing good for me. This one doesn't really either. <laughs> 
But I'd like, uh, at least like to have options here. We'll put that one back. And yeah, he'll go ahead and roll uh, pretty much all the dice that have a chance of being helpful. And Mark will go ahead and contribute uh, that one. So we'll remember that the uh, pickaxe is Mark's. And we just don't want accidents, basically. Oh, the double! The double! Okay, that was great. And hey, let's go ahead and use uh, one of Maxim's two remaining charges to turn that into a Vanguard. So wow. Uh, what is this? Because he can... Oh, wait. Why did I roll a blue basic? Oh, that's right. With uh, the construction arm, that counts as a repair. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Did we just do it in one go? Open in the sphere? Yeah! Yeah! All right, looks like this is it. We've completed the mission. Let's uh, go ahead and read. To the unknown creatures from the distant past of this distant world, I salute you. When our team finally began to crack the dome's inner layer, we expected myriad things. An ark, an archive, a vault created by the people of this world to carry their legacy beyond the apocalypse. Yet again, we were wrong. Inside, encased in protective carbon nanofoam, was an object as old as this planet. A steel that predated the civilization by millions of years. I'm not sure what that word is. With their last dying efforts, these creatures protected an artifact from an even older time. As resigned to the thought that all of their histories and culture and even their very lives were less important than this one cracked relic. I keep wondering whether humans would be capable of such sacrifice. The object they saved for us bears a clear resemblance to the architecture of the Eye of the Void. There's no doubt the builders who created the eye and our star map also left this stone as they spread life to this planet. What does it mean for us? Are there other steels like this on other planets? Was there one on Earth? The sides of the steel contain code we have yet to unravel, but atop it, we found one large symbol, alien yet familiar, a glyph that seems to symbolize uplifting, raising up, with several small dots scattered at its base. This last piece of the puzzle helped us understand some strange discoveries on this planet. The first of all species here uplifted many other species through genetic engineering and bionic modification, something that would never cross the minds of humans back on Earth. We'll have plenty of time to ponder this and to study the steel on our journey to the next world. Let us hope this time we find more than just ashes. All right, so we unlocked a lot of cool things as we uh, get ready to wrap up the mission. So we got a new objective that gives us four different planets to travel to. This is really where things open up, like even though this was uh, technically not part of the tutorial, it's kind of like tutorial part B. And then uh, from the unique object, the crystalline shard we found, we have the scintillating crystal shard we can research. And uh, from the thing we found, we can research the steel. So I don't know what that word is. I'll have to look that up later. <laughs> the builder's landmark. So those will uh, go in the awaiting area and will come into play once we actually take actions that reference them. All right, so now we get to uh, follow some things. So first, we're leaving the planet. And basically, we just clean stuff up. So let's actually go to docking. So we had three discoveries we didn't use. I, I kind of forgot about this one. <laughs> yeah, we can fit up to five. So we're going to bring these all back to the ship. I'm not quite sure what this will be used for yet. Maybe we can like spend it for research or something. All of our resting crew comes back. Bunch of people, including, let's see, where are they? Uh, doo -doo -doo. Where are my two? There we go. <laughs> these were my successful people from the first mission that actually ranked up. We didn't uh, manage it this time, sadly. But yeah, Riku and Amir are back and ready for action. All right, now we go to debriefing. Uh, nobody uh, leveled up because we didn't flip the rank card by getting three of those mineral things. We got zero of them. We did have five success tokens, plus one we had saved from the tutorial. You get to hang on to them, which means we can spend all six of these to buy a new die for each section. We get to pick from the available ones. I'll do that off screen because I do have to like look at each of the crew members and see uh, which things might work well for them. <laughs> Not really worth your time. Definitely tougher in solo with uh, like people playing each uh, one crew. It would be a lot easier to look through like your two or three characters and figure out which dice make the most sense. But that's good. We did uh, level up something. All right. And now we're unloading our unique discoveries. Uh, this is when we would technically gain the uh, scintillating crystal shard. And kind of fun, they each have a spot. And whenever you get a full row, you unlock something unique. So we are now only... A single discovery away from getting our first uh, bonus unlock. And then, yeah, it says we just move this to gathered discoveries in our card tray. I'm assuming that'll be useful. Oh, yeah, okay, definitely. <laughs> Look, uh, each of the research projects looks like it requires discoveries. So like the alien tech one we just got, we could, in a future uh, ship phase, uh, research the builder's landmark and see what's on the back by discarding that. And then with that, we'd bring our lander back. We'd uh, store our heavy armor plating. And that's uh, basically it. That was an entire set of turns and actions for one planet for ISS Vanguard. Uh, looking through the book, it looks like it, there's about 20 planets. Uh, now, I don't know how much like kind of extra stuff there is in there, but that was at least one of the uh, planets you could explore. Now, I should mention there's a memorial wall if any of our people died. Luckily, nobody did. 
and they have rules for how you uh, save your game and everything. But uh, that is enough for today. So like I said, once I play through a bunch more of the campaign and have a bigger feel for how it kind of builds and advances, I will uh, do a review and let you know my thoughts. But hope you enjoyed this uh, and good gaming. I'll see you at the next stop.